Welcome everyone. Um, today we're talking to Scott Blaze, the CEO from Global Sanctuary for Elephants. Um, he just did something amazing. He brought Mara the Elephant, who's 54, from Argentina, uh, where she was at Echo Park um, in Buenos Aires, to uh, the animal sanctuary, the elephant sanctuary in Brazil. Um, so I spoke to you earlier, that's I think two months ago, and she was going to leave at the beginning of April, but then the pandemic happened. Um, and you had to do a lot had to happen for her to actually move there. What did you do? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, actually, her, her trip has been delayed a couple of times because of all, so many th different complications with permits and bureaucracy and everything else. Uh, but fortunately, uh, however, the miracle happened. Uh, it came through that Mars trip came together with the help of many authorities, the incredible team at the Eco Park, our team here in Brazil. Uh, as the director of the Eco Park said, it's the first time that he saw everyone put all of their stuff to the side and came together and made it all about Mara. It was just a beautiful, beautiful experience and uh, one that we'll always cherish because of how it truly was about the elephant. And we're seeing the elephants in the background. So that's why I'm taking myself off screen sometimes because it's <laughs> such a beautiful sight to be like FaceTiming with elephants almost. But we're seeing two elephants. And can you tell us something? Which one is Mara and how is she doing um, being away a week at the park? Uh, Mara is the one that I think is going to be on your right. Um, and Hannah is on the left. Uh, Mara is doing exceptionally well, exceedingly well. We, we always knew she was a very social individual. She has been living with African ele elephants for quite some time at the Eco Park. Uh, but there was conflict between them because uh, they're two totally different species and they have different modes of communication, different ways of, of acting and behaving. African elephants are much more physical and much more uh, melodramatic in many ways. And Asian elephants are pretty grounded, pretty more an uh, analytical. And uh, but we always knew she had a very so strong social desire based on watching her behavior. So we're not surprised that she is fitting in so well. Uh, but we were actually surprised by Hannah's reaction. Hannah is normally the gentle, quiet one. Uh, but she came in in the morning and just had rumbling and roaring and bellowing and screaming and trumpeting and all these incredible vocalizations that I had only seen one other time in my life with elephant introductions. Uh, to many people, it's scary and intimidating and they see it as possibly aggression, but it was just completely unrestrained joy uh just a beautiful thing to experience and uh mara was initially a little bit tentative it was overwhelming for her i kept trying to tell mara that uh hana is the gentle one and mara didn't believe me <laughs> based on hana's initial reaction but as you can see now they are uh, doing exceptionally well uh, it didn't take very long at all for mara to gain more confidence and confidence and comfort and uh, just from the very first moments they were fully introduced together it's just been nothing but seamless and beautiful and they have been pretty much joined at the hip ever since and um, you say like when you had to talk to Mara, like you have worked a big part of your life with elephants. And for most people, like I have cats and, and I think cats and dogs are as close as I've gotten to animals. But um, what kind of like, when you say like how, how, what kind of animal is like an elephant? Like how do you have to, you, you, you pet them or you can talk to them or how does that, how do you call Mara down when you just said, I talked to her, let's. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's each elephant is individual, just like you and I are individuals and just like your two dogs or two cats or whatever, whatever species you're talking about. They're completely individual. Their characteristics, their likes, their desires, their, their interests, uh, their comforts and discomforts are completely unique to one another. And uh, with Mara, you know, what we do is just try to console them or comfort them or reassure them through our voice, uh, through our actions to let them know that we're listening, to let them know that we're observing uh with mara i would just say hey you know you can trust her she is good and they listen to the intention more than the actual words we actually had a lot of people say to us you know she's argentinian why are you speaking english to her uh one because my port my, my spanish is really ugly and she won't understand my spanish uh but two because the words don't matter as much as the intention behind the words it's the sentiment these are highly emotional very sensitive individ individuals uh very sensitive to species so they they listen to the heart more than the actual words and I see like one is a little bit approaching. Can, you can just like, you could just approach an elephant. Like if you were to approach Mara now, you could just do that. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, oh. There's a lot of things to it. We actually, um, you can see there's a fence between us. Uh, we're almost always between a f the fence between us. Anytime we're doing anything directly in contact, there's a fence between us. Uh, these are very powerful, very wild animals in many ways. Uh, they're also very traumatized individuals. So you never know how 
they will respond. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, although we do have a lot of comfort around them, we also have to maintain a lot of safety and respect for their capabilities, their capacity, uh, as well as for all that they've been through. Uh, you don't know what could cause a trigger, a, uh, a post-traumatic stress disorder type response. Uh, and if they do that, and if they do have an unusual response, you know, tragically, they can kill somebody in a second. They just have tremendous force. And while by nature they are passful, passive and, and peaceful, we always have to have complete res reverence and respect for who they are and what they have the capacity to be. Um, so, no, there's, we don't go directly after them. Uh, there's a lot of reading to what we do. There's a lot of communication. It's uh, observing their behavior, observing the nuances in who they are, uh, what they're exhibiting. Sometimes just a small change in their eye will cause us to step back a little bit further. And one of the challenges we have initially when they first come here is we need to let them know that they can trust us uh, and that we will listen. That takes time because we have to get to know that individual and each, each exhibits their, their likes, their pleasures differently. So when we see something with an individual uh, from Mara, you know, whether it be her ears getting wide open or her, ear, you know, her eyes going wide open, her ears going out or whatever else, if it's something we don't understand, we'll just say, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I don't understand you yet. So I'm gonna take a spe step back until I can get a better, uh, until I learn who you are more. Uh, and that goes both ways. Uh, if she's showing discomfort, uh, we step back. And uh, if I'm showing discomfort, if she wants something from me and I'm not comfortable doing it yet, I'll say, you know, Mara, I'm not ready yet. I need more time. I need to trust and I need to learn more about who you are. And, can and you they, tell us they respect that. And can you tell us something about Mara's life? She's around 54 now. She's at a sanctuary, so, so now she'll be happy, have a free life. But can you tell us something about her life up until this point? Yeah, Mara is uh, an old circus elephant. She was actually captured or taken from the wild. Um, sorry, let me take that back. She was taken from India. She was born at a domestic logging camp uh, where many of the babies were sent overseas because they wanted the moms to continue working. So she um, uh, was born basically to a life of confinement and restriction and uh, sent at a very young age to uh, North America, um, to South America, where she performed in circus for up to 25 years. Uh, she did actually kill somebody on the circus because of the trauma, because of the punishment, because of the abuse. Um, and then uh, she was eventually removed from the circus and sent to the Eco Park, or at that time, the Buenos Aires Zoo. Uh, there she lived. Eventually, uh, they, they received two other African elephants that she lived with. They were younger. As time went on, as they matured, there ended up being conflict. And they, one of the African elephants ended up in the moat uh, that surrounded the elephant exhibit. Um, and at that point, they actually thought Mara was the, the responsible party, uh, so they kept them separated. And from that point forward, Mara has essentially been living alone. Uh, she has shared the same barn, but only could touch on very limited base basis. And uh, for the most part, uh, they were separated. I mean, uh, they had to share the outdoor space, which is a very small exhibit. But for, you know, for many, many years, for only four hours out of the day, they were allowed outside. The rest of the time, they're confined to their indoor enclosure. So it wasn't beneficial for either species because the space is already small. Uh, and it's just made it even compromised even further because of the lack of uh, capability to, to have them cohabitate. And um, when you say like, because you notice, of course, but a lot of people don't, but because uh, when I was younger, I also went to the circus. I'm not sure if I've ever seen an elephant, but but the abuse, like how do, if you have to, it's extremely cruel, right? To train an elephant um, to become a circus elephant. It's unimaginable. Um, sorry, checking on the girls. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that. Unimaginable. Uh, <laughs> they, it's, it's really unimaginable what, what happens. It's something that most people can't fathom. Uh, it's incredibly abusive. It's really destructive physically, psychologically, uh, emotionally. It's, it really destroys a lot of who they are. Uh, and they, they really have no choice but to retreat inward or to fight back. And those that fight back are met with even greater punishment. Uh, they're labeled as killers, labeled as aggressive individuals, and they just are never given a chance to, to define or to, to redefine who they really are because they have this label as an aggressive elephant. Uh, fortunately, in my uh, life with elephants, I've been able to, to experience many of these elephants that were listed as a killers or autistic or antisocial or you name it, um, and watch them just completely transform as soon as they come to the sanctuary. It seems like in the first day, they already start their, their progress towards healing. Uh, there's just something magical about the sanctuary environment that allows them to feel safe and start to be vulnerable and start to exhibit who they truly are.
uh, in, in their core, uh, but it takes a nurturing environment and, of course, the friendship of other, other, other elephants to help them through and help them uh, rediscover what life is really all about. And last time I talked to you, you told me something interesting about a colleague of yours that, um, because uh, yesterday, for instance, I, I wrote a story on 44 elephants that were killed in Botswana, but you still said, like, uh, or your colleague still said that a free elephant is still um, better than a circus or a zoo elephant. Yeah, it's a quote from uh, Joyce Poole, and, and uh, or I'm going to paraphrase this because I don't remember the exact, um, let me think of exactly how she said that. Um, Uh, it says that captivity is a fate that is worse than death. Uh, I mean, she has the ability to look at any two photos of elephants, a wild elephant and a, and a captive elephant. And within a second, she'll let you know which one is wild, which one is captive, just by looking at their face. Uh, everything about them changes. Their whole demeanor, their presence, their spirit within completely changes in captivity. Um, and this is a person that has watched elephants that she has known for decades, uh, that she grew up with and she learned from. And she's watched them be victims of, of slaughter for, for uh, ivory, of starvation, of all the, the, the horrific ele uh, elements that, that do occur from a wildlife. And she still believes that that, that life, that risk, uh, that freedom is better than the fate of captivity because of how much captivity destroys the spirit of these individuals. And you're, you're now at, this is the first um, sanctuary in South America, right? Yeah, uh, are you okay if I walk a little bit to get closer to the elephants? Yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mara's coming into the view here. Hold, hold on a second. Let me see if I can show you guys. Here comes, uh, not Mara, Maya is coming up. She's the one that just showed up there. The others are further over. That was uh, Mara, Mara's little trumpet. I'll go that way. That was amazing. Um, just like... <laughs> I am sorry, I got distracted by trumpeting elephants. What was your question? Uh, I was. Uh, this is the first um, animal uh, elephant sanctuary in South America, right? In Brazil, this is the first one in the whole of South America. It is. It's the only uh, elephant sanctuary in South America, and it's really the only one that's required. There's about 50 elephants in South America uh, in captivity, and here at the Elephant Sanctuary Brazil, we have capacity, or we will have capacity once all the construction is done, to provide for all elephants in, in uh, South America as well as uh, Central America if they are all lucky enough to be, <laughs> to be liberated from their confines. But so that is the, that is the whole goal. Like there's fi only 50 in total in captivity in, in South America. Yeah, there's not that many. Um, put them. Oh, wow. I like the beautiful ladies. Uh, um, yeah, there's not that many, but you know, the reality is uh, our times are changing. We're starting to realize uh, that more needs to be done for elephants, that they deserve an, op an opportunity to experience this life, the opportunity for recovery. And as things are changing, uh, zoos are shutting down or circuses are closing and uh, more legislation is putting into action. We need to have the alternative. And there's a lot of progressive action here in South America, but there wasn't a solution. So these elephants, uh, such as Maya, who's coming up over here, uh, she was removed from the circus. Oops, she was removed from the circus. And then uh, because she didn't have a place to go, she got put on chains on a farm that was owned by the lawyer for the circus. Um, and she remained on chains with her friend Gita. Uh, for about six years before we were able to take her here to Elephant Sanctuary Brazil. So with all the progressive action, with all the desire, with all the human change, I mean, uh, social change, we need a solution. So that's what we're here to do is to create a solution, create an alternative that lets these girls, lets these elephants uh, experience a new life and uh, hopefully you know, be lucky enough to experience a friendship that Mara has just uh, started to, to develop with, with Hannah. And this is like like I'm FaceTiming with elephants. I already said this, but this is so beautiful. But this, oh, they're I just like lost audio. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, you're back. Yeah. I see you, but I can't hear you now. Let me see if my if I turn the volume up. Uh, uh, the joys of technology. I know. You get to see beautiful elephants in South America, but I can't hear you anymore. But you can't hear me anymore. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave you running up a little bit. Um, you can't I'm, hear me at all anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got nothing. That's okay. I'm just going to um, thank I you so much. Hi, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Will this make up for no audio? Hi. How are you? Uh, Maya's been here for since 2016. Uh, she's... A big, beautiful girl, lovely, lovely elephant. 
Are you sleepy? Sleepy girls. Uh, one thing that we see here is uh, the elephants are actually very active at night. Uh, they explore tremendously. And then in the morning up until early afternoon, they tend to be very, very sleepy elephants. There's no, do you hear me? You don't, you don't hear me anymore. Uh, oh, oh my. I got you. We're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, perfect. I can like look at it. This is going to be like a one hour live video of just elephants, I think. But um, <laughs> how many elephants are you have there now? There's three in total, four in total at the sanctuary. Oh, we have four in total. Uh, we have Maya, Mara, Hannah, and Lady. Uh, Lady arrived with a, about six months ago. Uh, she's doing exceptionally well. She arrived with really catastrophic foot ailments, um, which is one of the number one killer, uh, one number, number one uh, reasons ele elephants die in captivity uh, from massive foot infections. And um, but she's at the back of the property. She's actually doing recovering well. She her feet are doing much better. Uh, but she's a bit of a uh, she likes her solitary life right now. She's not totally comfortable with other elephants. She's still learning what it means to be an elephant. And right now she's choosing to be off at the back, which she's thriving back there. Hello, Hanabi. Hannah's coming up now too. Um, she's thriving back there. She's doing really well, well, but she's not ready to ready to meet Mara. Is it is it something like what just happened? Is it like some kind of I've Thank seen you, it before? Girls. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Um, oh yeah, perfect. But is it something when they do the trunks like that? Is it like a hi or a hello or does it mean something when they go with their trunks towards you? Uh, it can be, but in that case, it was. Do you have anything good for me? Oh. <laughs> There's a little bit. It's all individual, uh, and that's part of what we have to do. We have to understand the differences between the same uh, same behavior traits. Uh, so sometimes, we'll, uh similar behavior can mean vastly different things. Uh, just like uh, I'm going to walk around a little bit more. The yes. tail wagging of a dog and can be a happy, excited tail wagging, or it can be a nervous wag. Uh, yeah. It can be and many different things. So we have to look at all the the whole big picture, not just one element of it. And what is the what elephants are you focusing on now? For the who's the next elephant to come to the sanctuary? Uh, we have several that we're working on. Um, there's actually four in Mendoza, Argentina, um, po uh, Pocha Guilamina, Tammy, and Kenya. Uh, one of the challenges with them is that we have uh, not only to be prepared for female Asians, but we have to build our facility for female Africans, as well as the facility for Tammy, who's a male Asian. So we have a lot of construction to do. Right now, we have the capacity to hold up to 10 female Asian elephants, but we have to continue to expand and grow uh, and evolve our facility, which just takes time and money, uh, both which we seem to have not enough of all the time. There's a lot to do here. Uh, we're also, there's the two Africans at the Buenos Aires uh, Eco Park still. Uh, we are working to uh, start the process for their transfer, but it's gonna take a little while to, to make that happen. There's a lot of logistics, a lot of bureaucracy to work through, but we'll get there. Uh, and then there's several elephants here in Brazil that we're also in contact with, uh, trying to find out the best path to, to help them find a new life as well. Uh, thanks, uh, that is amazing. And I hope you can save all those, like if there's only 50, like. I hope you can um, you'll find the funding and the, and and everything to um, rescue all of them. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. It's like like I said, FaceTiming with elephants. It's my first, but it was absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> well, hope... well, we got we got lucky today. Uh, the girls were still nice and close. They haven't gone off to explore yet. Normally, they're relatively close in the morning, and then they head off into the bushes and start exploring. So. Uh, Next time we call, we may not have this opportunity, so we're glad it worked out. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I'm going to end with just you on the ending screen because that's just like a beautiful view. Thank you. Okay, well, it's better with better without me. We'll just put them on the screen. What you do, Mar? Thank you very much for this opportunity. We really appreciate being here and sharing the story and uh, helping the world see a little bit more about these beautiful ladies. <laughs>